funny that it's uh, that it's S and implied testing positive or oh. something, isn't it? <laughs> Pull your finger out of your ass. Jeez. This is my first ever football jumper. My three goat votes, I should say. My three goats. My three votes <laughs> for three Charlie. Votes. For Char oh, top of the world, <laughs> mate. What a time to be alive. I look a bit like Nick Bellick from uh, GTA 4, I feel, with this. That could, that could get dangerous. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 79 of the Pressure Point podcast. Trade week has just wrapped up, or trade trade two weeks, however long it's been, um, has just wrapped up. The deadline day was tonight, and to be honest, it was pretty underwhelming and um, not as good as previous years. Well, I think we, we had about 17 trades go through this year, and compared to last year, I think we had nearly 30. So just in comparison, it's been a bit of a different year, but I guess with the salary caps and um, having less players on your list, that's all going to contribute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been a couple of weeks as well since we since we've done an episode. Um, was pretty much it was after the grand final, wasn't it? So yeah, we did the grand final, grand final episode wrap. with uh, attention to detail, boys. That yep. was our last episode. So it's been a couple of weeks, taking a break. More just waiting to see what happened with the trade period. We're probably going to jump on sooner if week one was a bit more exciting, but not yep. much happened. So we held off, and but here we are. Yep. Have you been spending your, your two weeks? It's been been a while. Has been a while. It's, For us, uh, anyway. I've picked up some work again, so I'm not um, lounging off the government anymore, which is a good start. So I picked up some work, which has been fun, keeping myself busy. Um, other than that, mate, not not a whole lot. I see you've gone with the uh, the mullet look that suits you, mate. looks good. For those yeah. who can't see on camera with the headphones on, he's got a nice new shave. Yeah, I don't mind it. It's, it's come up well. Is that a lockdown job? Yeah, it is. Yeah, so uh, good old Kristen's done a good job on me. Um, shout out to her. She's, um, she's taken bookings as well, so... For anyone that wants a haircut, a mullet one in particular. So, um, I think that's on. Um, that's a bit out of my reach. Yeah, I don't think you. Yeah, maybe in six months. You I've, might got, get I've got the hat on for a reason. We'll just <laughs> leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's been good. Um, little little refresher after the, a big season of footy as well. Um, so it was good just to have a little break and um, chill out for a bit with the podcast. But we're back now and. We're going to have some guests as well over the next uh, next couple of months in the lead up to Christmas too. So a lot happening over the next uh, next few months. Um, but as we said at the start, it was the trade period over the last couple of weeks and um, free agency as well. So um, yeah, not as exciting, but there was still plenty of moves and recruits to talk about. And it all started on the 1st of October um, when free agency opened and the first one to go down was Jake Kelly to Essendon. I reckon it's a pretty good get for the Bombers. Absolutely. That's a big get for the Bombers. Adelaide would well, probably be a bit disappointed to see him go, but yeah, another big get for the Bombers and just going to improve their list um, from what they already had this year. So it's going to be uh, impressive yep. to see what they've got. Yep. Uh, I like that from the Bombers. It's exactly what they needed. Um, Marby Old Chol, your boy. My Gold boy. Coast. Yeah, I, w- I was disappointed with this one. I mean, fair enough. He's gone for family reasons and also opportunity reasons. He'll play every game at the Suns and... Every right to him for leaving, so good luck to him there. I did go for a walk to the uh, to the MCG a few days after he got tra- or he got, went in the free agency period, and he was still running laps of punt road, so it was nice to see that Richmond's still letting him there and train while in the build-up to going to the Gold Coast. But, yeah, that's a, it's a good get for the Suns, I reckon, and he'll be uh, a good fit for them. Yeah, you'd think he'd uh, want to get to the Gold Coast ASAP. Why would you want to stay in Melbourne at the moment when you've – when you've got a good excuse to actually leave. Well, that's the thing. I, I got no idea. I would have been out as soon as possible yeah. if I was him. But he's hung around a little bit longer, probably to say goodbye to some of the boys potentially. Yep. But who knows? Yeah. Uh, George Hewitt to Carlton. That was um, that was a very nice acquisition by the Blues. I thought that's a big get for you guys. A good defensive runner runs two ways in the midfield yep. there, so it's a big get and probably just what you were after. Yeah, I feel like he's heavily underrated. Um, bit of a no fuss player. You know, doesn't really do a lot of media. Um, and just gets the job done. and It's exactly what we need, that hard-nosed uh, defensive midfielder. So very happy with that pickup. Um, there was a bunch of pick swaps as well during that during that time. Um, it's a bit, bit mind-boggling, to be honest. Do you have a better understanding of it? Uh, look, I've got a decent understanding of it. It's probably a bit, little bit boring to ramble on about yeah. here, but I mean, it mostly revolved around Collingwood swapping picks to get enough points to require um, Dacos in the yep. draft. So that was the main one. Um, and then a lot of other picks, I guess, sort of just got swapped around to suit clubs in a particular way. But yeah, we probably won't delve too much into the pick swaps. You're a little yep. bit more on the boring side of things. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is where the, well, this was the first player trade to happen. That was Nathan Kruger to Collingwood. Don't know about, much about Kruger, but. Um, I mean, he, he's a big, big body. He's a ruckman. Um, could be good for the Pies and a bit of a project player for him. 
I think it's going to be. And he didn't get the opportunity he would have wanted at Geelong and he'll be stoked to go to the Pies now. I think by the sounds of interviews I've seen with him, he was really happy and was really keen to move over there. So good get for the Pies. And they've, they've been pretty active in his trade season. So they'll be pretty happy with the way they finished up, I think. And Nathan Kruger was there. Yeah, good start. Yep. Jeremy Finlayson to Port. This for me, jeez, oh, I got him at an absolute bargain price for a future third round selection. For a contracted player too. Yeah. Finlayson was still contracted. That's ridiculous. Went for family reasons. So... Good on the Giants for um, you know understanding the compassionate side of things and looking after him in that sense. But yeah, it was definitely um, oh, they got him cheap. They got yep. him very cheap for a future third round selection. And he's probably uh, well, not I wouldn't say I don't want to say the missing link for Port Adelaide, but he's definitely I think a great fit. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's um, he's going to do great things there. He was you know, he's kicked bags of goals for the Giants, and um, I mean when you see a player like that go for a future third round selection, then you see some players get a get traded for a top 10 pick it, it makes you really makes you wonder doesn't it so um next one free agent luke dunstan to melbourne huge that is this is bizarre to me from a st kilda point of view this man came in halfway through the year pulled 11 brownlow votes and got delisted by the saints i'm not sure their exact reasonings i mean from the outset that seems like a pretty good performer um, I mean, maybe St Kilda supporters that watch him a bit more closely than I would say otherwise. But from what I've seen, you know, especially the Brownlow votes themselves, that surely would mean he's a decent player. But look, he's going to love going to Melbourne, um, the potential for success. And he's really going to have to push to get a spot in that midfield because their midfield is already so elite. But no doubt, you know, clubs are going to cop injury throughout the year. If Melbourne's midfield cops an injury, his first one yep. in, he'll fit in nicely, I think. Yeah, he'll do very well there. That's a huge pickup for the D's. Just gets better and better for them, doesn't it, after their flag? So, um, and speaking of the D's, they did a mega trade um, pick swap to get into the first round. It's, uh, yeah, another one, a little bit yeah. mind boggling. It's yeah. um, a lot going Maybe on there, but yeah. they did, yeah, they did get into the first round, which is big for them, especially because, you know, being the premiership team to get a first rounder is a good effort. Yeah. Will Brody to Frio. That was a, pr- I mean, I feel like Will Brody's been a part of the trade period for the last few years. Just there's, he's always talked about going somewhere and, He's finally got his move away from Gold Coast. And what baffled me, he's only 23 years old. I feel like he's older than that, but he's still got a lot of, a lot of footy ahead of him. It's probably because we're so familiar with hearing his name every yeah. year in the trade period. But yeah, exactly right. He, he did want to get out and he finally got the got the out he was looking for. And um, he went to Fremantle, who I think were pretty keen to have him as well. So it's a, it's a good result for both Brody and the Dockers. Yep. The big one, Adam Chera to Carlton. Oh, I was very happy with this one. Very happy. Um, we gave up a lot, and I think you have to give up a lot for a player like him who's you know got an, at least another 10 years of footy ahead of him. And, um, yeah, and he's, he's cherry on top of what we've already got. The cherry on top. The cherry, that's oh, well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well he's done. the cherry on top. And it wasn't just you that was pretty happy with this one. I think it was all of Ligon Street as well that was going off yeah. after uh, Chera signed. But um, that's a massive get, like we said, and... Obviously, they got Brody in free oak, but they've lost Chera as well, who was, you know, in their best four in the midfield. So, big loss there, but um, massive for Carlton. And I think, just like I said with George Hewitt, another midfielder that can run both ways, which I think is what Carlton was missing. You've got a lot of contested players that can win clearances, um, but it was probably the defensive mindset that you were lacking, and these two blokes come in and fill that gap. Yeah, he's going to be that Rolls-Royce kind of player. Um, yeah, put him with, with Walsh and Cripps. He's, um, he's going to be... Very good in there. I'm very excited to see what that midfield can do next season. Uh, Tim O'Brien went from Hawthorne to the Bulldogs as a free agent. Um, he was unrestricted, so he could just walk there, and he did. A um, bit of a player that has a lot of – shows glimpses of potential but goes missing a lot as well. So, I mean, it's worth the risk for the dogs anyway. They're in the, in the window, so they may as well – Go for it. Exactly right. And he's, look, he's a, he's a solid player. I, I'd, yep. you know, I'd be pretty happy if I was the Bulldogs having him on the list. And he's a high flyer too, so you could see some yeah. spectacles. Almost well, nearly, took mark of the year, didn't say, he? Nearly yeah. one mark of the year if there wasn't two Richmond blokes in front of him. But yeah, no, he's, <laughs> I, look, I think this is a solid get for the Doggies and that'd be pretty happy. Yeah. Uh, one of the big trades to go down was a big three-way trade. Um, so Lewis Young from the Dogs went to Carlton. Sam Petrisky seaton went from Carlton to West Coast. And then... Um, West Coast number fifty two pick went to the dogs in through that three away trade. That was a bit that confused me. But 
I'm pretty sure See, that's this how it was a smaller yeah. one version yeah. of the mega trade, but yeah, they're exactly right. So what you said was spot on. They are uh, a bit of a three way trade there, and I think everybody got what they wanted. Petreski Seaton was looking for more mm. midfield time and opportunity, so West Coast were able to offer that. I'm tipping from a Carlton point of view, you'd be a little bit disappointed seeing Petreski Seaton go. Probably not used the way he should have been. I mean, he's probably more of a midfielder than a half back, and I feel like he probably was played a little bit out of position. Yep. Do, do you do you feel the same way? Yeah, I feel like. David Teague and the coaching staff over the last few years probably ruined it for him, just playing him out of position. Um, in his first year in 2017, he was playing midfield and at half forward and played his – that was his best season, his first year. Um, and for some reason has gone into a back pocket. So I'm disappointed in the fact that, yeah, we didn't get to properly see him play in his normal role. But at the same time, like, I was pretty pretty disappointed with – his attitude and his efforts over the last few years anyway. So um, I guess time will tell if that's going to work out. But we got pretty much got Lewis Young for him, who's a 200 centre, 200 centimetre key back, um, who's only, yeah, 20, 21 years old. So um, I'm happy either way. If we only, you know, if, if we only got pick 52 for him and that was it, I'd be like, okay, very disappointed. But no, I'm happy that we've got Lewis Young in return, so it works out well. I think you've done quite well here. I mean, Lewis Young, you said he's a key backman, but he's actually quite versatile. He can play forward yep. as well. We've seen that. He can pinch hit in the ruck if you need him to as well. So he's got that um, potential there. And Petrescu Seaton, like you said, obviously disappointing to let him go, but this could be a win-win for both clubs. Could go to West Coast and Petrescu Seaton could make a decent career for himself, but Carlton's pretty much topped up their midfield now anyway. Yep. I wouldn't see where he'd slot into that midfield with, that you have at the moment yep. now anyway. So it's probably the right... Yeah, the right deal for her, all, all two players and yep. three parties. Exactly. All right, next big one was uh, Robbie Tarrant to Richmond and Callum Coleman-Jones to North Melbourne going the other way. I think Richmond won this trade. Um, it was a, every potential for Coleman-Jones to just walk in the preseason draft. And um, if we didn't trade for Robbie Tarrant, um, we could have lost our compensation that we got for Charles. So... It came right down to the wire. I'm pretty sure it was the last probably 20 minutes or so that we had to make this deal. And, um, yeah, we, we got Robbie Tarrant, um, a third-round pick, and a future second, while North Melbourne received Coleman Jones, two third-round picks, um, and a future fourth-round selection. So uh, I think the Tigers have won this. Robbie Tarrant will come in. He'll fill Dave Asprey's role, who unexpectedly retired. And North Melbourne are really happy with Coleman Jones. He'll be their number one ruckman soon. Goldstein's probably arguably only got one year left in him, and Coleman Jones will take over and probably get a little bit more opportunity than he would have at the Tigers. I'm a little bit disappointed in the way it was handled, I thought. Um Maybe this is just a biased opinion from a Richmond supporter, but after the incident last year in the Gold Coast, cost the club a hundred grand, put in all this development to him, and then he just you know, and then he wants to pack up and leave. But that is the nature of the beast, I guess. You get a lot of players that, especially big guys in ruckman, you know, find that they get developed a lot at other clubs and then get poached. I mean, we yep. did the same thing with Nan Curvis when he came to Richmond. He was didn't get much game time at the Swans, but they developed him into the ruckman he was, and we've got him at the right time. Yep. So this is going to happen to a lot of ruckman and big men and. Yeah, this is the way it went down. Yeah. Yeah, I think North have done incredibly well. They're getting a player like Coleman Jones. He showed glimpses this year of his potential and um yeah, he'll be he'll be great for for the Kangas and and yeah, and Robbie Tarrant as well. It's a great get considering where Richmond is in their premiership window. I think that's a perfect get for him. And I think if you took Alex Rance out of the equation, you'd have a couple more all Australians under the belt too, Robbie Tarrant. So yeah. he's, a, he's a gun player. I'm very happy. despite his age, I'm, I'm relatively yep. happy with this one. Uh, Patrick Lipinski went from the Bulldogs to Collingwood as well for pick number 43. It's pretty on the money, I reckon, that one. I think it's yeah. very accurate, and I think Collingwood have done really well here as well. Yep. This is a big get for them, and Lipinski will get more opportunity. And we, that's the word we keep using a lot, yep. is opportunity. And that's mostly the reason players want to leave. I mean, money as well, but usually opportunity, and Lipinski's going to get that at Collingwood, and I think the dogs weren't too sad to let him go. Yep. Uh, one of the big names to move this trade period was Jordan Dawson from Sydney to Adelaide. I love this player. I reckon he's great. And he is a gun. His left foot off halfback is um, is one of the best in the competition. He's a, he's a gun. And you want to talk about winners and losers from the trade period. For mine, Sydney, Sydney arguably have to be... I mean, you look at Jordan Dawson they lost and I've already forgotten the other bloke they lost we mentioned earlier already. We just spoke about him. It's lost my mind already. But keep talking, I'll find it. We'll keep talking. I'll keep rambling on until we find it. But they've lost a couple of handy players. Uh, George Hewitt, that's yep. it. George Hewitt and um, 
Oh, jeez, I'm having a I'm <laughs> having, having, I'm having a mayor. Jordan Dawson and George Hewitt. They're two pretty good, you know, pretty big names at the Swans. Young players as well. Big careers ahead of them. Um, lost them both. And I think they were expecting to get Laddams in, Peter Laddams. Which they did. And they got him in. Yeah. But he doesn't fill their role. No. So, I mean... Depends how you look at it. The Swans have got another enough young talent. They've got the academy as well, so they can always pick from that yep. in future years. But they wouldn't be super stoked to see these uh, these two blokes leave the club, I wouldn't have thought. No, no, it's a big loss. Big loss for Sydney. Um, I think Dawson will do well at Adelaide back in his hometown as well. Um, uh, this is all deadline day trades at the moment. This is what happened probably in the last hour, two hours of trade period, and that was Darcy Fort to Brisbane from Geelong. Don't know much about him, to be honest. I know he's a big ruckman. Haven't seen much of him play, so we can probably just slide past him and <laughs> go to uh, Jonathan Segler from Hawthorne to Geelong for a future third round. I don't know. that. I mean, his Hawthorne's... He was playing a lot of games for the Hawks and a future third round is... Does his age have anything to do probably with it? Probably his age. I mean, Geelong, Ge- Geelong love the oldies, don't they? Well, there are, there are a retirement home up there at Geelong at the Cattery. But, um, look, he fits their needs really well. I mean, you speak – Geelong's ruckmen have been spoken about a lot in terms of not having a consistent ruckman. I mean, you've got Blixarves that was really good in there and now sits in the back line. You've got Reece Stanley who pro- I think probably gives, you know, a lot of effort one in every three games. Radical is not consistent enough in the ruck. So they really needed like someone like Segler to come in who gives his all every week, I think, anyway. And it'll be a good fit um, up at the Cattery for, you know, another year, two years, however long he lasts. Yep, yep. I think, yeah. It'd just be good to uh, compliment. The, how, how, would that mid, how old would that midfield be if you added all their all their ages together? They'd be pretty old. They'd be put well over 100. They'd be older than the Queen. Yeah, definitely. She's, definitely. T- she's ticking over <laughs> the years. So, yeah, no, that'd be a very old side. Uh, staying with Geelong and uh, their youngster Jordan Clark has been traded to Fremantle. Um, what was it for pick twenty two? I a few- have a bit of a gripe with this one. Yeah. So I don't know how much you looked into this trade in particular, but Jordan Clark was being talked about for a few, well, about say a few weeks, but for a while in this trade period. And the Cats originally said to Freo, "We'll take your pick twenty two for Jordan Clark." Mind you, this is a bloke that. Hasn't been given the opportunity he was after. Rarely given a game. He said, we'll take your pick 22. Freo go, all right, no worries. Freo then acquired pick 19. Geelong turned around and said, no, no, we want your pick 19 now. Started playing hardball for a guy that, yes, he was contracted, which I think is the only legs they had to stand on. But they don't play the guy. Let the kid go mm. get an opportunity somewhere else. You're not. It's three picks difference as well. It's not like it's 10 picks in the draft yep. that's different. Mind you, those picks do all get pish, pushed back because of these father-sons in um, Darcy and Dacos that are earlier in the draft. But regardless, the gap is still the same. And I was pretty disappointed in the way Geelong handled it. I thought they could have just made things a lot easier. And it did get done, finally, obviously. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about it. But yeah, I thought it was pretty disappointing on uh, Geelong's behalf to keep a kid there who just really wanted to go and get some opportunity in game time. Yeah. Geelong are notorious for being very hard to deal with at trade period. Well, well I mean, well. look at the Tim Kelly situation from yeah. a couple of years ago. They, they didn't let him go in yeah, the end. Exactly. So, I'd, yeah, you wouldn't want to be a Geelong player wanting, wanting to leave more opportunities would you well yeah and that's the thing it's disappointing if he was playing every week and contracted and vital to their side you'd say okay fair enough they don't want to let him go but this kid just wants to play yeah. let him play yeah exactly uh the last couple of the nights and that was max lynch from collingwood to hawthorne very young ruckman hasn't played a lot of games and um he's obviously going to be the future at hawthorne once ben mcavoy retires and i think all parties would i mean collingwood would probably Disappointed to lose him, um, but he was never going to play with Grundy there on his big seven-year contract. No, well, that's it. I think Grundy's contract probably is what hurt Collingwood in terms of keeping Max Lynch. I think they'll be really disappointed. Max Lynch is going to be, I think, top five ruckman in the comp in a couple of years' time if he gets his opportunity the way I think he will. And he came in for one or two games this year when Grundy was out and he just really shunned and his yep. work ethic was right up there. So... Yeah, I'm really excited for what Max Lynch can do at Hawthorne. I'm glad he's you know gone. And once again, we use the word again, gone for that opportunity, and I think he'll shine. Yeah. And the final trade to go down was Peter Laddams from Port Adelaide to Sydney. Um, where did they swap this? Well, so Sydney gave up pick 12, and then they got 16 in return. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So they've, yeah, yeah. they've done a bit of um, a pick swap as well within that. So it's an interesting trade, this one. It is an interesting one. And I think Port Adelaide, 
could probably have afforded to let Laddams go with bringing in Finlayson as well, who will probably play a similar role. Um, there wouldn't have been room for the two of them there. And Laddams did one out. I think he, he'd in, indirectly been or indirectly been given the uh, the word that sort of Port were happy to push him out of the side. And Sydney are happy to take him, especially, with, you know, Buddy's probably got one, two years left. Yep. Um, he'll fit in nicely down there. The only question I have is where does that leave Reed from the Swans now? Mm. With Buddy and Laddams down there, there's probably no room for him. You wouldn't have thought, but... The Swans are a pretty clever team. They've done well this management-wise the last few years. You'd imagine they'd figure something out. But this is good for Laddams. I'm glad he's got himself another chance to continue his career. And Port won't be reeling too much either, like I said, with pick, the pick-up of Finn Lason. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's... Um, it's, it's, it, yeah, they've been very busy, both those teams, Sydney and Port. So, um, But yeah, that was it. That is... They were all the trades and the free agency moves that happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, as we said, not as exciting, not as... you know. Big, bigger names as there has been in the past, but um, nonetheless, there was still some interesting moves. And um, who are your winners and losers of that trade period in terms of clubs? I have a feeling our winners are going to be the same, um, and that's the Blues of mine are the biggest winners of the trade period. Um, the biggest test, I think, for Carlton and what I want to see from them as well, and I mean, you can agree or disagree with me on this one, but I think it's been a few years where Carlton have arguably won the trade period um, and just probably haven't translated that to enough wins on the actual game day. But I just can't imagine that not happening this time around. Um, the players that you've traded for and the way everything's happening, Michael Voss coming in and et cetera, et cetera. So I think they're the biggest winners of the trade period um, this year. And I think in terms of losers, I almost look at the clubs that are in premiership contention that didn't make any moves. So Brisbane being one of them, Richmond being another one. Um, I think Rich, Bris- Richmond brought Taron in, obviously. Brisbane got Darcy Ford. Brisbane got yeah, Ford, yeah. but yeah, I know what you they, mean. They weren't heavy movers. No. Um, and you'd think I would have thought maybe they'd make a few more moves. Um, but the biggest loser, that's a, oh, that's a real tough one. I think mm. maybe the Saints. Yeah. I mean, the Saints didn't really do anything. No, they didn't. Um, and uh, considering they, you know, they won a final in 2020, and then this year didn't make the finals, yeah. you'd think that they'd be pretty eager to um, make some changes. And all they did was really lose Luke Dunstan. Yeah. So you'd probably I say think, the Saints. Yeah, I think the Saints are my biggest losers for this year's yeah. draft, trade period. Yeah, I probably would have said the Saints as well. Um, and big winners. Yeah, it's hard to go past the Blues, just considering who they brought in and and for what they've given up as well. And they've done really well. Um, I think North have done quite well as well. They've got, you know, Callum Coleman Jones is going to be the, a, a 10 year ruck slash forward. Um, so I think they've done well. The D's obviously getting Luke Dunstan in um, for nothing is um, is great to add to their premiership team. So, yeah, I think I think they're the big uh, big winners for this trade period. So, And I love that for Melbourne too. They've won the flag. They're on a high. They're probably thinking yeah. we're unstoppable. But no, nah, they're, still, they're still finding ways to improve their list yeah. and even trade picks to try and get you know get some bit picks in from the draft. So they've done really well, and that's just a sign of a good club, and they're yeah. going to try and stay there as long as possible. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're going to do each club's best 22 over the next few weeks. I think we will. It's going to be tough. Um, we'll probably do them excluding the draft. I mean, a lot of draftees probably aren't don't fit thought, into most clubs' best 22. Oh, you're going to say anyway. excluding our teams? No, no, no. We're <laughs> definitely doing our teams. <laughs> yeah. um, I think excluding the draft, I mean, there's yeah. arguably, you know, most draftees this year won't fit into most sides' so 22s. Probably Nick Dacos is Dacos probably the only probably one will. that will go straight in and Jason Horn francis Horn francis will probably play for North. Um, He'll go straight into North's team. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. And then um, Darcy as well, potentially. Tough to get into I mean, the Bulldogs. But yeah, I yeah. can say, but Jamara was a big prospect yeah. and he didn't get much of a look this year. He got a couple of games. So potentially, but yeah, we'll probably exclude the draftees this year. But we'll go through each club's best 22 now the trade period's done and dusted. And uh, you can leave your comments and thoughts on the uh, yeah. on all the posts and see what you think of our thoughts. But yeah. Yeah. Just before we wrap up, what were your, what were your thoughts on, on the Bobby Hill situation? Well... The deal that didn't get done. Yeah, well, Ian Bobby Hill, um, you go back to a month ago. Doesn't like Ian, apparently. No, he doesn't like Ian. You go back to a month ago um, in the Western, I think one of the newspapers over there in WA. Maybe it's in Sydney. I'm actually not sure where the newspaper is located, but that's beside the point. It was early September. He had an interview and he stated that he was 100% committed to the Giants, had another year on the contract, and he just didn't want to be one of those players that um, let down the team that drafted him. Um, Fast forward to Friday just gone and he's turned around and told the club that he wants to trade back to Victoria. He's having a baby with his partner and he wants to be close to his cousin, Brad Hill. I think they're cousins. Could be wrong about that one. But he wants to be close to Brad Hill regardless, their family. Um, But then nominates Essendon specifically. 
my issue with this is, and I've got a couple of issues. My biggest one is if you want to go back to a certain state to be there for whatever reason, that's fine. But to then say to your club, I want to go here. I'm contracted. I want to move, but you're only able to deal with one club because I only want to go to Essendon. That's not fair on the club. And that to me doesn't show that you want to go to that state. It shows that you just want to move to that specific club, yep. which for mine is, yeah, they're two very different things. If you want to move like, Players that go, I want to move for family reasons, right? Just say, I want to go back to WA. But I'm only playing for West Coast. Yeah, well, Tim Kelly did that, didn't he? That's it. Yeah. But I'm only playing for West Coast. Mm. It's like, well, are you moving for family reasons or are you moving because West Coast is offering yeah. you more money? So I, I don't like that look. Um, and I also just, I don't like how it was sprung upon the Giants. Uh, I mean, look, I don't understand his situation fully. I don't know exactly what's going on. But from the outset, it didn't look great that... Yeah, midway through trade period, they had no idea that he was thinking of leaving and then springs on him, hey guys, yeah. try and get something done, I want out. Um, he'll walk back into the Giants you know, with open arms, they'll be happy to have him back, it just depends how he feels about the situation. Um, but from all reports, especially from uh, Giants talent manager and all that, they've all been saying that you know there will be no hard feelings with Bobby trying to find a, a move, but um, I was personally disappointed with it, I didn't think it was a good look on Bobby or the game. And like you said, there's been a few players that have done that where they've... Yep. Uh, tried to move and then gone to specific clubs rather than yep. uh, yeah only gone to specific clubs. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how he uh, how he plays his footy next year, um, given all the controversy that's happened. So, whether he doesn't play at all because he just doesn't want to be there, or um, he has a breakout season and his value goes straight up, and then he can get say, his big move. If so, I was Bobby Hill, I've got yeah. one more year in my contract. Yeah. I'm coming out and having the best year I can possibly have, getting yeah. my value through the roof. Every team will come after you. And look, Giants might find some success, some success next year. Yeah. They made the finals this year. They're you know pretty convincing. If Toby Green had to been there, who knows where they would have gone? Yeah. He might want to stay at the end of next year if he has a great season. You never know. But if he doesn't and he plays well, his mm-hmm. value goes through the roof, like you said, and he yeah. can get that move back to Victoria that he wants. So yeah, yeah I think yeah. the the limits are endless for Bobby Hill. I think he's just going to really just find out what he wants and um, stick to that. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, that is us done. That is a trade wrap um over the last couple of weeks it's been good to be back hasn't it it's been very good it's, yeah. it felt weird not doing the podcast yeah, no. every week so it's uh it's gonna be good to get some consistency back into things with some guests like you mentioned and yeah the trade wrap so it's yeah it's fantastic it's a bit of an aflw preview as well try to get some aflw girls to come on it's gonna be um it's gonna be a good few months leading up to christmas so um exciting times and it's been a great year so um, but as we say every week, make sure you leave us a review, subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Keep the reviews coming. They mean the absolute world to us and we really appreciate them. And we'll, uh, we'll chat soon.